Jacksonville at 14 and 2, Miami 9 7 regular season. Let's go down to Bonnie Bernstein. All right, Bern, thank you. Miami last week upset third seed Seattle. You're facing the number one team today in the AFC. Jimmy, give me a primary objective one on offense, one on defense to beat the Jaguars. Well, the biggest thing, too, we've got to prevent the big play. They've got some big play uh, capability with their wide receiver, Jimmy Smith, and McCardle, and then Fred Taylor. We, we've got to keep the big plays to a minimum. Jimmy, thanks. Burn. All right, Bonnie, thank you. It is a uh, relatively cold day. It was in the 80s a couple of days ago, front row through here, and I think the wind might prove significant. Out of the northeast at 14 miles per hour. Aaron, you sound like a Floridian to say cold. <laughs> 57 in January, where I come from, it's pretty doggone nice. Miami, 19 and 16, of course, two Super Bowl championships. Jacksonville playing its seventh postseason game since the franchise was established in 1995. Tom Coughlin has been the head coach here since that day, actually a year prior to that. Spent an entire year game planning, pretending like they were playing. Jaguars have won the toss. And they've got Reggie Barlow and Alvis with it deep. Here is the kick from Murray, and we are on the way. It's Alvis Whitted, number 86, stumbles as he gets to the 25, and the Jaguars will put it in play first down and 10 from that spot. Against Tennessee, Mark Brunel suffered what he called a grade two sprain medial collateral ligament. A three to five week injury, but he's back. He sat out two weeks ago in the final game against Cincinnati and told us Thursday after practice that was as good as he had felt. And he needed to feel feel that well, Vern. Uh, Tom Coughlin very upfront in saying if this game would have been played Wednesday, Mark Brunel would have been sitting watching Jay Fiedler. There's McCardell in motion on first down and ten. And Brunel will throw. Good protection deep. Right side incomplete. Intended for McCardell up near the 48-yard line. Let's check the uh, offense now for the Jaguars. Coleman at left tackle in place of the injured Tony Boselli, Tilski, Wade, Wiegert, and Searcy going to the Pro Bowl. Fred Taylor, Damon Shelton in the backfield. Jimmy Smith, 116 catches this year. McCardell in the tight end is Kyle Brady. And there again is Tom Coughlin, fifth season as the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now Jimmy Smith in motion across Brunel. to the left, switches hands, and moves into the secondary, out to the 37-yard line. Robert Jones with the tackle number 52. The Miami Dolphin defense, the strength of it in the middle. Bowens and Gardner speed on the outside. Zach Thomas, the leading tackler, he's going to the Pro Bowl. Rodgers and Jones compliment him. And in the secondary, Patrick Sertain, Marion, Sean Wooden, and the Pro Bowler, Sam Madison. First down and 10 on the Taylor run. Jimmy Johnson in his fourth season as the head coach in Miami. Three wide receiver set. Smith comes wide left. And press coverage by the Dolphins. Here's Brunel. Quick setup. Slant pattern. Jimmy Smith. He's got open and room to the 40. Down to the 25 and somersaulted at the 23-yard line. Patrick Sertain. A 41-yard gain. These two teams met in the regular season last year on Monday Night Football, and the game started off with a 77-yard run by Fred Taylor. And Jimmy Johnson worried about the big play. Look at the release by Jimmy Smith as he then clears the rest of the Dolphins' secondary. And wow, talk about deja vu for the Dolphins already backed up to their goal line. Double tight end set and the handoff. It's Taylor coming left and driven down at the 21-yard line by Zach Thomas, number 54. One, second down. Zach Thomas heading to the Pro Bowl in February. And needless to say, the Dolphins' leading tackler. As a matter of fact, almost 70% more tackles than anybody else on the team. Do not judge a book by its cover when you look at Zach Thomas and gauge him to be a middle linebacker. Second down and nine. Play fake. Brunel coming to the near side and overthrowing his tight end. 
Kyle Brady, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up third and long. There's a pretty decent breeze today uh, here in Jacksonville, and the Jaguars are going right into it. It's pretty much coming right down the field from left to right. So when Miami uh, lost the coin toss, they decided to go ahead and, and put the wind at their backs for the first quarter. And I think you might see some erratic passing going into the wind today. It's that strong. Smith and McCardle both uh, break off to the right side. Albus Whithead is bottom of the screen to the left. Third and nine out of the shotgun. Here's Brunel. Not much pressure. Pulls up, fires it, caught at the 11 yard line. That's good for a first down to McCardell. Brock Marion with the tackle, but too late. Oh, and Jimmy Johnson won't be happy about that because where are Bowens and Gardner that Mark Brunel is allowed to come up into the pocket? He stepped straight upfield to buy himself the extra time to get the ball to Mark Cardell. The Miami pass rush went all upfield. Take a look at this. One of those two has got to stay in the middle and keep Brunel from being able to do that. But you see, they were routed off to the side. That is, that is a kind of a, a pass rushing air that will make Jimmy Johnson nuts. On first down, the handoff to Taylor. Skips left, hit at the line of scrimmage, and tackled for no gain. Jason Taylor, number 99, who today goes up against Ben Coleman. That is uh, the spot occupied with such prominence by Tony Boselli. And uh, Tony Boselli undergoing ACL surgery reconstruction in Birmingham a couple of days ago. And he is still in Birmingham watching uh, the game on television today. And, and Ben Coleman uh, uh, talked about impossible shoes to fill. Uh, ben primarily a guard in his career, but he does have good feet and good pass protection skills. And he has filled in for Boselli before at left tackle. So he's not a novice. <laughs> Double tight end step, they'll keep it on the ground, and Taylor gets a couple of hard-earned yards down to the eight-yard line. Zach Thomas and Brock Marion there. Well, Tom Coughlin, the head coach of this team, but because his offensive coordinator last year, Chris Palmer, is now the head coach of the Cleveland Browns, this year he took on the added responsibilities of calling plays. And Vern, a whole lot written and said about conflict between Tom Coughlin and his quarterback, Mark Brunel. Both of them say it was overplayed. The fact of the matter is, he's a head coach. He can call the plays if he wants to. Out of the shotgun, four wide receivers set this to the empty backfield. <laughs> Brunel with time again, drills it deep, caught, touchdown, Jimmy Smith. Jaguars flood the right side. Jimmy Smith working from the slot. Just a simple break to the inside. And again, not much pass rush by Miami. Mark Brunel had a lot of time to find a breaking Jimmy Smith. Mike Hollis for the extra point. Smith for 41 to set up the touchdown. Jimmy Smith for eight to complete the drive. 116 in the regular season. Two already here. Jaguars strike in the opening drive. Nine plays, 73 yards, and just short of four and a half minutes. Jimmy Smith joined this team after a year out of football in 1995 and has become a sensational part of the success of this franchise. Brock Marion is deep. Jerry Wilson back with him. And Steve Lindsay, the kickoff specialist, will put the toe into this one for the Jaguars. Into the wind, it'll be taken by Marion at the three. Goes left, has a little bit of room, and is out of bounds at the 35-yard line. So Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins find themselves trailing by touchdown. They'll have the ball when we return. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown pass. Five receivers here for the Jaguars. Here's Jimmy Smith in the slot. He's going to lock up with Marion, and it becomes man coverage down in the end zone. If you watch Smith, though, in the end zone, watch this little push off right there. He really gets away with separating himself from Brock Marion. Fabulous protection in the pocket. Mark Brunel allowed to step up, but Jimmy Smith got away with a pretty good shove on Brock Marion. Dan Marino opens with three wide receivers on first down, and he will throw 
Mild play action goes left, intercepted by Aaron Beasley. Picked off by Beasley. And the problems persist for Dan Marino. How about that? Beasley led this Jacksonville team with six interceptions this year. Marino was picked off 17 times, including five against Dallas. And look how this one opens up. And Beasley, knowing that he had safety help behind him, dropped off his receiver even before Dan Marino threw the football. Beasley has already dropped off and is just sitting there waiting for that pass from Dan Marino. And I, and I can't begin to even fathom what Dan must have been thinking about. Uh, it, it's, it, it's stunning. Tony Martin was the intended receiver, but Beasley reading it, knowing he had deep safety help, just sat there and waited for that pass. First down and 10 after the intercepted pass. Smith starts in motion. Brunel, again, in absence of pressure. He will scramble. Here's a test of his mobility, and he slides down at the 35-yard line in front of Zach Thomas. Now, Mark said it's going to take something really important to get me out of the pocket and, and running the football. Yeah, I guess he had no choice here. Again, the, the middle opens wide up for Mark Brunel as both you know, as we're taking a look at both Bowens and Gardner getting routed again out of the middle. You know, a lot of people thought there was a mismatch here with Tilski, Wade, and Weger at the middle of Jacksonville. So far, not the case. Second down and four. And off Taylor, cut back play again. First down at the 30-yard line for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Zach Thomas, Derek Rogers make the stop, but too late. First down. I think everybody is stunned by that interception. I guarantee you, Jimmy Johnson is stunned. It, it, you'd love to give credit to Jacksonville for making some highlight film play, but in reality, that it, it's just mind-boggling that Dan just threw that thing away in the flat like that right to Beasley. On first and 10 from the 30, they go out of the shotgun, and the handoff goes to Taylor. Well, let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. All right, Vern, it seems no one may have benefited more from the Jaguars' first week by than Mark Brunel. We mentioned that he's wearing two braces. This one's going to be on the left leg for that MCL sprain. The other one he's been wearing since 97 from an injury he suffered on his right knee. Brunel told me before the game he feels 95%. He said, I might not have that quickness, but we don't want to change the game plan up. So we'll see those sprint outs and those naked bootlegs. And so far, we're seeing exactly that, Vern. All right, Bonnie. That just sounds awkward, Dan. Uh, I, I played with both braces, but I certainly wasn't a quarterback. <laughs> Here's Smith, third catch. Out of bounds just short of the yardage needed for the first down at the 20, Sam Madison defending. For those of us that have enjoyed watching Mark Brunel over the years, we know that improvisation is such a big part of his game. He has just wonderful mobility. He's not a pure pocket passer. Boy, that's, that is just a veteran wide receiver getting off the football. Did you see Jimmy Smith, uh, a push and a shove from a corner is not enough to slow him down. He does a nice job routing uh, Sam Madison off of the ball. It's just a, a quality release. James Stewart in the lineup, and he comes over left tackle. That would be Ben Coleman's spot today, and that uh, appears to be enough to give Jacksonville a fresh set of downs. Sean Wooden with the tackle, number 22. No game, third down. Nope. Short of it. Well, they're going to bring the chains in. They're going to uh, go ahead and measure this anyway. When they first placed the ball, it yeah. appeared that it was on the 20-yard line. Still good enough. That's not a first down? <laughs> yes, it yeah. is. <laughs> Ed Hockley, our referee today, took his good old time. I wanted to see him call it third down. <laughs> if you're a running back, you say, feet don't fail me now. If you're an announcer, you're open. Eyes don't fail me now. First and ten. Fred Taylor back after Stewart's one carry. And Dan Marino prowls the sidelines, anxious for redemption, to get a chance to get back out there and hoping that his defense can negate this thrust by Taylor in the offense of Jacksonville. There's no game to the 20-yard line. 
Which Super Bowl team was the greatest of all time? 78 Steelers, 89 49ers, 85 Bears, or the 75 Steelers? Vote now at SuperBowl.com. I can hear people clamoring in South Florida. Did you not mention 72 Miami Dolphins? And being led by Don Shula. Yeah. Second down and 10. We had nothing to do with it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we are not the authors. Second and 10, 7 0 Jaguars. Out of the spread again. And the absence. Oh, now the pressure comes and they got to it. Tim Bowens. First sack of Mark Brunel. This is a defense that got to uh, John Kitna in Seattle six times last week. Well, a lot of pass rushing is honoring your lanes and staying at home. And that's what happened. Mark Brunel was going to try to step up. But number 95, Tim Bowens, after a line stunt, stays in the middle. Boy, and look at that penetration. He just goes right over the top of Zach Wieger. Again, huge defensive tackles, both at 315, Gardner and Bowens. They have got to be dominant today to give Miami a chance of winning. Third and 17. McCardell comes to the near side. Blitz is coming. Brunel deep man coverage in the corner, and it's incomplete for Jimmy Smith. Terrell Buckley, who lost his spot as a starting cornerback midway through the season. Jimmy Johnson saying last night, you know when he's out there because he's the guy with the bullseye on his back, and they went right at it. T Buck is the man. <laughs> Quarterback breaks the huddle and says, where is 27? I'm going to give it a shot his direction. You can't fault Terrell Buckley there. That was good, solid coverage on Smith. And Mark Brunel, uh, knowing that he's already got the lead and trying to make it 10, isn't foolish with his throw. As you can see, Mike Hollis has missed only one in postseason in his career. 14 to 15. This one from just outside the 35. So a 45-yard effort is good. A 73-yard drive, 7-0, an interception, and a field goal, 10-7. You hear announcers all the time talk about, oh, it'd be good for another five yards. Look at the football here drop in this 45-yarder from Mike House. That was good by about two feet. Right into the wind, he really powered it through there. Steve Lindsay, Brock Marion comes up and grabs it on the run at the 10-yard line. And is met and driven down at the 26-yard line by Chris Howard, number 24. Well, Dan Marino and the offense have run one play thus far. <laughs> Dolphins' second offensive play, down 10 nothing, And Marino will hand it off to J.J. Johnson on first down. Of the right guard out to the 31 yard line and into the arms of pro bowler Carnell Lake. Well, six minutes to go in the first quarter. We're going to finally introduce you to the Miami offense with Dan Marino at quarterback. 12 touchdowns and 17 interceptions in regular season play. Struggled with the cervical nerve injury. He was worried at one point about his ability to ever return. On second down, the handoff. Goes to Johnson for a couple of yards after the 33-yard line. Offensively for Miami. They'll have Webb, Dixon, Ruddy, Donnelly, and James Brown on the offensive line. J.J. Johnson had a very productive day last week in Seattle. Pritchett, the wideouts, Martin and Gadsden. O.J. McDuffie will also play in the tight end. In place of the injured Troy Drayton is Hunter Goodwin. Drayton is active, but hampered, and we don't expect to see much of him today. Third and three. Marino will pass for the second time. Walks it out in the vicinity of Aaron Beasley left side. Defensively for Jacksonville. Say hello to them and then say goodbye as we get ready to punt. Win Walker, Payne, and Brackens. Pop, Martz, and Hardy, the linebackers. And you've met Aaron Beasley, Fernando Bryant, the rookie, Carnell Lake, and Donovan Darius complete the secondary. Tommy Hutton is on the punt on fourth down. Reggie Barlow awaits it. And this is a fine punt riding the wind. 
and it will stop. Hutton had a marvelous day last week in Seattle in the Dome, providing field position for the Dolphins, and he certainly fulfills his task here. 57-yard punt, nothing on the return, down inside the 10. But one airship flying over Jacksonville today to provide all of us with these uh, spectacular aerial shots. After the 57-yard Tommy Hutton punt, third possession now for the Jaguars, and they are pinned inside their own 10 with the first down at the nine-yard line. Vern, this will be Jacksonville's 18th offensive play. Miami has run a total of four. Brunel, quick penetration on Taylor, and he picks up one yard as uh, Sam Madison came from the corner and got into the backfield quickly. Jimmy Smith opened this thing up with a 41-yard catch. Well, he got, you saw that wonderful release from the line of scrimmage. And again, uh, Jimmy Johnson, since he knew he had to come here and play Jacksonville, he knew it's going to be a game of big plays, either denying them or watching them happen to him. But he knows he doesn't have a big play team, and Jacksonville does. Draw play. Taylor skips two tackles. Right and here we go. Yeah. Bye-bye. Brock Marion chasing. Brock Marion still chasing. Gets help from Smith. Touchdown. No flags. A 90-yard run. Could have sworn we were just talking about big plays. One team has them and one team doesn't. He broke Thomas's tackle almost at the line of scrimmage. He slipped another and got behind Marion. And he's just completed the longest run in the history, albeit the short history, of the Jacksonville Jaguar franchise. Hollis with the extra point. We talked from the very beginning about Fred Taylor being a difference maker, his ability to make people miss. Well, there's miss number one, Calvin Jackson. Miss number two right there by Sertain. Zach Thomas was in the mix there. You see people all over the place. And then it's just speed. And Brock Marion, not a slow guy. You can see that on how effective he is with kickoff returns. And I would say, Vern, that the hamstring of Fred Taylor is just fine. Keep in mind, Fred missed six games this year. And right there, I think we're looking at a good reason why he was their number one draft choice last year. Well, I mentioned Zach Thomas had missed a tackle. Like it's clear on replay that Thomas got knocked away from contact by Calvin Jackson's missed tackle. Yeah, Calvin Jackson, the first one in there. And, but this was, this is just running skill by Fred Taylor. And right now, Jimmy, I know we got to try to be upbeat. We got to wrap up. But this, given the problems Miami has had offensively, we got to wonder how big a hole this really is. There's the kick. And it's taken by Wilson at the seven yard line. And he is knocked down as he gets to the 26 yard line. Well, if you're Miami, I guess. The finest reminder you can have is Kansas City 17, Oakland nothing in the last weekend of the regular season. Oakland came back to win that, and that helped get Miami into the playoffs. But what a shocker. Well, it's flying in the face of everything Jimmy Johnson knows is good for his team. Even if we're not spectacular, we got to hang in there. we got to be close. We've got to be in a position to try to win the game in the fourth quarter. Now, uh, staying close is out of the question without taking some chances. And every time the Dolphins have taken many chances this year, it's blown up in their face. Look at the disparity in yardage. 171 yard difference. Marino hit from the back side. Fumble, fumble the ball. Oh, Lord, Jacksonville has it. And it's a ball is live. This is still live. Tony Bracken. They haven't blown a whistle yet. No. Nope. And finally, he rumbles toward the end zone. That's a touch touchdown. Oh, Vern, 
did we not do a Miami game earlier in the year where there was a live ball on the field and they all stood around and looked at it? And that is exactly the case here. Nobody blew a whistle after the fumble by Dan Marino. Tony Brackens, here's Ed Hockley. The call was recovered by Jacksonville, and the player was not touched down by contact. Therefore, the result of the play was a touchdown. What Ed Hockey Lee was saying right there was that after the fumble, nobody from Jacksonville was down by contact. Jimmy, of course, incredulous that that's the case. Hollis for the extra point. It starts with a great play by Tony Brackens. He knows he's too far upfield to sack Dan Marino, so he's going to take a swipe at the football. And that's where it all starts. Coming from your right, we're going to see Tony Brackens. There it is. That He knew he couldn't sack Dan, but he went for the tomahawk to knock out the ball. Big time play here by Tony Brackens. And then the ball is alive. All Jacksonville down by contact there. No Miami. And Tony Brackens has to be cajoled. Now right there. Now right there he was already. Now did that. I, I can't see his feet right there. There was a Miami touch. But I think Dan he was upright. So he was not down by contact. We couldn't see his knee or his feet on that touch. We're going to have to look for another angle there. There was a Miami touch. It, the question would, you know, Tony Brackens would have had to have had a knee on the ground when that touch occurred. This is tackle football. Not flag football, not touch football. Mercy, which is what Miami is in need of. Marion at the five. The torture has been unending for the Dolphins. Marion to the 26-yard line. Flags are down. Yeah, late flags flying in here. Well, how's that for making matters worse for Miami? the play was over personal foul unnecessary roughness by the kicking team number 54 15 yard penalty it's first down well they're calling Zach Thomas for a personal foul all right there's Brackens there's the knockdown all right now Tony picks up the ball right there is, is that James Brown standing there who had a chance he's just walking away from the play now, right there is a just a touch in the back, but Tony Brackens is standing up. What? What is that? You don't just touch a guy when he's standing there. Well, and Brackens, Whoa. in the midst of the celebration, had to be urged into the end zone by his teammates. But what a lapse of concentration by Miami, Vern. Talk about going to sleep. Joel Smengi, number 99, and Cornell Lake, number 37. Now well, think about this, a 41-yard pass to set up the first touchdown, then Marino intercepted on his first play, a 90-yard run following the punt, and then Brackens strips Marino of the ball and runs it in for the touchdown. Second down, 11. You know, Tony Brackens initially didn't realize what he was doing, Vern, that the play was still alive. Luckily, a lot of his teammates, Bryce Pop and others, realized what was going on and got him up and got him moving. I would, uh, that is, uh, from a defensive lineman's perspective, as good as it possibly can get. You cause the fumble, you get the sack, and you pick it up and you end up in the end zone with it. And you, uh, you're nurtured en route. <laughs> Well, that's a good look at why Tony Brackens is going to his first Pro Bowl this year. Right of Fairfield, Texas from the University of. And Marino out of the shotgun on third and eight. Here comes the blitz. Marino 
moves to his left, pulls up, fires it incomplete. Beasley covering Aronde Gadsden. And, and, and Gadsden has got to do something to try to get open. He's just standing there with Beasley in front of him. Dan Marino has absolutely nowhere to go with this football. And limited mobility and all, buys some extra time, but he has no option but to throw that thing over into his own bench. On fourth down, here's Hutton. Barlow awaits it. Line drive punt taken to the 39 by Barlow. And he is down. An arm tackle made by Dwight Hollier at the 47-yard line. Look, Vern, like that ball popped right out of Barlow's hands and came right back to him. Well, our coverage of the AFC Divisional Playoffs continues tomorrow from Indianapolis. Eddie George and the Titans against Peyton Manning. You know them well by now. Terrence Wilkins, Marvin Harrison, Edger and James. Heck of a matchup tomorrow, 4 o'clock. The Titans at Indianapolis, and it begins with the NFL today at 3.30 Eastern time. Well, it's stunned, shocked. We're going to run out of adjectives to describe what has to be going through the minds of the Miami players. Another missed tackle. Taylor to the 45, the 35. That's a gain of 18. Well, Fred Taylor is the whole package. Once again, Calvin Jackson left in the dust of Fred Taylor. And by the time anybody from Miami catches up, that time Derek Rogers, it's first down yardage. And right now, Miami somehow defensively in the face of this huge deficit can't, they just can't quit. They can't stop. Zach Thomas somehow has to rally his troops. Here's James Stewart, and he gets a couple inside the 35 to the 33. Mark Brunel telling us that James Stewart, in his mind, was the most valuable player of this team this year. And, it's, uh, and, and last year as well, with the way he filled in uh, for Fred Taylor. But, Vern, you and I have been around the National Football League for a while. It, it's been a while since I've seen an explosion of this magnitude in the first quarter of a football game, especially a playoff football game. Oh, well, you've got two weeks worth of big plays already in the first quarter by Jacksonville. Second down and nine. Shelton, well played, not play fake. Brunel, plenty of time, goes deep in the corner, right side, and it is tipped away at the end zone intended for McCardell. And uh, Sam Madison was back there. Well, Sam Madison had an interception. And uh, Keenan McCardell turns into defensive back here, and it's a good thing he got over there and got some contact on Sam Madison because Madison was going to come up with his eighth interception of the season. At, uh, when that ball was about 10 yards away from Madison, McCardell was well to the inside, and he really hustled to get over there and make that play. Third and nine. Shotgun again for Jacksonville, and the play clock winds down to Grinnell. Burns one of the allotment of three timeouts. That's about the worst thing that's happened to Jacksonville this quarter. <laughs> Which gives you some sense of, of the way the tide is rolling right now. Jeez, oh, how will they overcome? Well, when this game is in the books, officially... We'll have NCAA basketball for you on CBS. UCLA travels into Chapel Hill, and they'll take on the 14th-ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina. That's next as our coverage of CBS basketball continues this afternoon. 24-0. If you just walked in from uh, Saturday errands, you're probably shocked by this. We've had a 90-yard run, a Marino interception on his first play, a Marino fumble return for a touchdown by Tony Brackens. That, by the way, is the 12th return yes. for a touchdown this season by opponents of the Dolphins. Well, something to chew on, Vern, during the uh, intermission between the first and the second quarters is how much do you think Jimmy Johnson is thinking about giving Damon Hewitt a shot at quarterback tonight? On third and nine, Grinnell back across the middle. Caught, flag is down. This one might come back. Jimmy Smith hopes not. There's a flag down at the 34-yard line. <laughs> and 
And back it comes on the procedure call. Illegal formation, offense, number 86 was off the line of scrimmage. There were six men on the line. It's a five-yard penalty. Repeat third down, and that is the end of the first quarter. And some first quarter it has been, particularly from a Jacksonville perspective. No miss, friend. It's 24-0 Jaguars. We've reached the end of one. We welcome you back to Altel Stadium in Jacksonville where the Jaguars have rolled to a 24. Well, they've rolled and juked and dived and jumped, and they are up 24 nothing with uh, Dan Deerdorf and Bonnie Bernstein, Vern Lundquist, Dan Marino, an absolutely horrid start. Intercepted on his first pass by Aaron Beasley, and then uh, Damon Heward still got the jacket on. A fumble return as Tony Bracken sacked Marino, fumbled, caused the fumble, picked it up, and ran it in. Screen pass. Look at this. Nobody within 15 yards. Another missed tackle. Another missed tackle. It's become a mantra. That is a touchdown. What, what a tremendous play by Fred Taylor. What an embarrassment for the Miami Dolphins. Equal measures of both. This is as shoddy a tackling effort as I have seen in more than a decade. Well, Patrick Sertain, the first to miss, then Sam Madison gets his effort at it. Sertain misses again. Now, the reason nobody's near Fred Taylor initially, Miami plays so much man coverage that the wide receivers, Smith and McCarnell, just take their corners downfield. Mike Hollis with the extra point. Twelve seconds have been played in the second quarter. Fred Taylor with two touchdowns. A 39-yard pass reception earlier in the afternoon. The longest run in NFL playoff history from scrimmage. 90 yards for a touchdown. Followed it up with a run that might have included the most missed tackles in NFL history. Point total posted by the Jaguars, second most in the first quarter in postseason history. This one taken by Brock Marion at the eight-yard line. And he's cut down as he gets near the 28-yard line. Well, if you want a play to symbolize the tempo of this game and the tenor of this game, look at the last touchdown reception. Well, first of all, the blitz up front. They sell out. You can see right there that Brock Marion came on the blitz. Jerry Wilson came on the blitz. All right, the first guy, that's Sean Wooden. He's the first guy to miss. And then right there you see that Sam Madison missed. And Sertain, everybody wants to get in on the action. And a brilliant piece of work by Fred Taylor. We don't want to concentrate solely on the missed tackles. Fred made them miss. But this is a Miami team. They're better than this, Fern. I, having played last week in Seattle 3,000 miles away, Playing on a short week, playing Sunday, late Sunday afternoon, and now having to play the early game Saturday, you've got to assume it's taken a heck of a toll on the Dolphins. Uh, they, they, they're not this bad. Yeah, the 3,000-mile trip to Seattle, and this one 367 miles. And you wonder if their defensive football team isn't showing some of the wear and tear of having to carry this offense all season long. Look at that. Gracious. Uh, Miami just needs a first down. Here's Marino. Let's start with the basics. Well, it's not going to be on this play. Gary Walker, who is in double digits for sacks this year, gets one on Marino. He had 10 sacks. Acquisition from the Tennessee Titans. What a huge free agent pickup for Jacksonville with Gary Walker. Defensive tackles just don't get double-digit sacks. You know, John Randall does it in Minnesota, but it just doesn't happen. What a fine Gary Walker has been here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Third and 11, Miami. Jaguars will blitz. Marino steps up. 
puts it at the feet of O.J. McDuffie. It'll be fourth down. And Dan was hit by Kevin Hardy about the time he let it go. Marino is 0 for 4. And you look at Tom Coughlin and his free agent acquisitions, especially on defense, Vern. He gets Carnell Lake, which hurts the Steelers. He gets Gary Walker, which hurts Tennessee. You notice he's not only adding to his own team, but he's also wreaking a little havoc in the uh, AFC Central at the same time. Whoa, Hockey bobbles and it's blocked. All right, good. And recovered at the 21-yard line. Corey Chamblin, number 23, as Hutton bobbled the snap, came through to block it. It was a low snap. Kind of wobbly, look at it die, doesn't have a lot on it, but it was in the air, but it was, you know, you see a first baseman sometime mishandle that soft little lob from the pitcher, and that was the case there, and Chamblin has all the time in the world to come in and block that thing. Ed Perry, the snapper, just tossed one back there that looked like that proverbial dying quail as it came into the hands of Hutton. Jamlin with the block, and Jacksonville up already 31-0, has the ball at the 21. Taylor to the 18-yard line. Sean Wooden makes contact, and uh, Tim Bowens helps. Friday on CBS, action, romance, and adventure. TV Guide says now and again puts it all together and adds up to one of the smartest shows on television. It is time for Now and Again, Friday on CBS. Second and eight, with 12.45 to go first half. Brunel, on and drop back at the 26-yard line. And looking at Mark Brunel right there, taking a shot to his knees, Tom Coughlin's got to be thinking about Jay Fiedler. <laughs> When I, see, yep. when I see a hit like that on a guy that's uh, out there with a bad knee to begin with, look at the blow Mark takes right here. His own lineman gets thrown back. That's Rich Tilski that gets thrown back into Mark's knee. And that might be all I need to see if I'm Tom Coughlin, especially given the way Jay Fiedler played in their finale against the Bengals. Jay Fiedler had a really terrific game in that last game of the season here as Brunel sat out with the bad knee in his fourth year from Dartmouth. Here's the handoff to James Stewart. Got room. Oh, he's going to stroll in and score. Flag in the end zone. I am thunderstruck. They might flag Miami for playing so horribly on defense. Jerry Wilson apparently is going to be called for the personal foul. Here's Hockley. Yep. Yeah, that's really a smart play by Jerry Wilson. Putting James Stewart to the ground in the back of the end zone. Yeah, that's that's showing him. Five yards into the end zone, Jerry Wilson just gives James Stewart. Unnecessary roughness, defense, number 24, after the touchdown. The touchdown counts. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Burn. What else can happen? <laughs> I'm beginning to think that, that uh, this, we may get out the old record book. We're well on our way. Here's Hollis's extra point. Well, there. A couple of minutes ago, I was thinking about Buffalo Houston in 1993. That thought has been erased from my mind. And I think we ought to get ready for Jay Fiedler. After all, it's Fiedler time. It's a relatively quiet Jacksonville crowd right now. They are stunned along with all of us, I think. 38-0, six scores on six possessions for the Jaguars. Uh, a divided community. This was such a rabid Miami hotbed before Jacksonville was awarded the expansion team. Uh, virtually everyone in this stadium was a Dolphins fan until their beloved uh, Jaguars got here. Steve Lindsay will kick off. And he's going to ride the wind, and this will be his uh, 23rd touchback of the season. He had 22 in the regular season to lead the league. 
And how have things gone awry for Miami? Let me count the way. Yes. Aaron Beasley starts it off with an interception of Dan Marino's first throw of the game. Tony Brackens follows that up by knocking the ball out of Dan Marino's hands. He runs it in for a touchdown. Corey Chamblin blocks the punt. That ends up in a touchdown. Remember and I, the uh, Clint Eastwood movie, Every Which Way uh, But Loose. Jacksonville has a Calvin Jackson to go with their Jacksonville. Brock Marion, we are told, is out with a hit pointer. Here's Marino still in there and uh, sends this one over the head of J.J. Johnson. Now well, let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. Vern, interestingly enough, before the game, I happened to ask Jimmy Johnson, I said, if you fall behind early, how long are you going to stick with the run? And he said, and I'm quoting, he said, we've got to stick with the run as long as we can because if we have to pass the ball, we're going to turn the ball over and we're going to be done, unquote. And then I followed up. I said, well, would you even consider putting Damon Heward in? And he said, you wouldn't want to go into a game even thinking about it, but, and his voice trailed off, but I just checked and uh, Heward does still have his jacket on, Vern. Well, in his worst nightmare, I don't think he ever envisioned having to change his plans down 38-0. Here's Marino, incomplete. Well, you've seen missed tackles. You've seen interceptions. You've seen fumbles, block punts. Now you see a drop ball. Marino, 0 for 6. And the guy that you would think would, you'd want him to go to, O.J. McDuffie, can't hold on to that ball. You know, no. it's, it's, it's hard to think of descriptions that aren't that don't seem unkind because this has been a disaster uh, if you're a Jacksonville Jaguar fan it's been the best thing you've ever seen but Miami has just done everything wrong out of the shotgun blitz coming deep left side intercepted by Beasley at the 40 yard line Trying to find Tony Martin. The ball too far to the inside. And you know, what choice does Dan Marino have but to try to make something happen? But this is catastrophic for the Miami Dolphins. Tony Martin wasn't even turned around really in a position to make a play. By the time he really gets all the way around, he doesn't have any chance to react back to the football. And I, Damon Heward and whatever plans you had, if Jacksonville comes out of this and moves into the 40s, I think Dan Marino's uh, got to be done. New quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars is the fourth-year man, Jay Fiedler. Hands it off. And Taylor is stopped behind the line of scrimmage at the 41 by Rich Owens, number 96. Jay Fiedler signed as a free agent last summer. He is in the... He signed a one-year deal. Yes, very uh, key. Right? Yes, absolutely. Fiedler will be a free agent after this season, uh, whenever that ends for Jacksonville. Certainly not ending today. They have the home field advantage, so either Indianapolis or Tennessee will be here next week. And still working. Yep. Got it. You expect no less. Second down and 12. Fiedler play fake. He is chased. And dumps it at the feet of Damon Shelton. That will be an incomplete pass. Rich Owens providing the pressure. He uh, took advantage of being out of the tight end pocket and got the ball back close to the line of scrimmage, so no intentional grounding, even though Rich Owens is all over him and has a hold of him. But, uh, one of the quarterback's only luxuries once uh, the referee deems you're out of the pocket. Rich Owens... One of the guys that's really had a wonderful year. And how much better could this have worked out for the Jaguars today to get Brunel out of this game healthy? On third and 12, here's Fiedler across the middle. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And this is the first time that Jacksonville has not scored on a possession intended for McCardell. I'm sure Coughlin will rip him over on the sidelines. <laughs> Aaron Beasley, two interceptions today. Six in the regular season. Here's Brian Barker. O.J. McDuffie back to return it. Just about down by Whitted at the two. It does go into the end zone. And the Miami Dolphins will have it first down 
at their own 20, trailing by 38. Up 38 nothing, and Dan Marino continues at quarterback on first down from the 20 yard line. Well, even though Dan has two picks already in this game, Vern, there is blame aplenty to be spread around this entire Miami roster. Still looking for his first completion of the day. 0 for 7. And the two interception. Here comes the defense. He goes right side. The pass is caught out in the right flat. By Gadsden. Let's go down to Bonnie Bernstein. Vern, you brought up a good point how there's a, a you got to spread the blame around. As a matter of fact, Marino came off the sideline absolutely livid, and he walked right over to his receivers and said, you guys have to finish your routes, Vern. All right, and he might go over the defensive guys and say, you guys have to make a tackle. It has been a uh, completely dominant Jacksonville one can think of. Well, the journey of 100 yards begins with a first down, and it'd be nice if they could get one. Left side. Gadsden again hit by Donovan Darius. And they are looking at a third down. And what they're looking at in Donovan Darius is one of the big hitters. Donovan was their number one draft choice last year, and Tom Coughlin brought him in because he's a big striker. And right there, you could see what kind of blow he delivers when he hits a big guy in a Ronda Gadsden. Ended up being a helmet-to-helmet -helmet clash there. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Third and five out of the shotgun. Four-man front for the Jaguars. They will blitz. Across the middle, there's Grant Boyer defending, and he may have defended a little too aggressively. And we may have a first down here, Vern. O.J. McDuffie by penalty. By Grant, but it's a first down. He'll take it. That's an old Scandinavian proverb, isn't it? Every <laughs> 100 yards begins with a first down. This one will be a first down for Miami. Yeah, I'm just, I, here's Ed Hockey League. Pass interference, defense, number 52. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul, first down. Let me give you a little context. The first Miami first down comes 20 minutes and 34 seconds into the game. Boy, you're way early. <laughs> And take a look at the shot that O.J. McDuffie takes. And I don't blame you. I'd be a little upset, too. That's a that, that, that's the kind of a blow Dick Butkus used to deliver to guys coming across the middle. Play fake on first down and 10. Marino deep left side. And it's a little behind his intended receiver. Caught but out of bounds. Rondé Gadsden. So a second down and 10. Tonight on CBS, it's Winning Lines, the exciting new game show from the creators of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Last week, a soccer mom won half a million in three minutes. To see what happens tonight. It's winning lines tonight on CBS. 38 zip, second and 10. 38 zip, you gotta keep repeating yourself. <laughs> I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. Marino, left side. Incomplete. It was intended for Hunter Goodwin, the tight end, and Carnell Lake, number 37. Carnell Lake going back to the Pro Bowl for the fifth time in a new position. He's made it as a strong safety. He also played cornerback in those years in Pittsburgh. And here he goes again, Dan. Back to Hunter with it. And, and what he's done for Jacksonville, Vern, is to really solidify a bunch of kids. There's a rookie starting at left corner in Fernando Bryant, a second-year guy at safety beside him in Donovan Darius. You've got Aaron Beasley, who's only a fourth-year guy at the other corner, and Carnell Lake has been such a solidifying influence, a, a role model influence for those kids. On third and ten, a one-hopper. It'll be fourth down. Intended for O.J. McDuffie. It's hard to imagine what is going through Dan Marino's mind right now. Well, and, and of course, all the question marks surrounding uh, his future with the Miami Dolphins. Jimmy Johnson's future with the Miami Dolphins, and boy, will there be a firestorm after this game is over down in South Florida. Hutton's punt. Barlow lets it bounce, and it takes a uh, sideways hop. Limps to a rest at the 27-yard line. 44-yard punt, nothing on the return. Jacksonville by 38. 
Kind of those scenes in the background of the World Golf Hall of Fame in St. Augustine, not too far down A1A. Jacksonville leading it here at Altel Stadium, 38, 38 to nothing. I'm not sure that I could pay my way into the World Golf Hall of Fame. <laughs> Look at Davis Love is around here. He might uh, grant you an invitation. I think Davis is here at the game today. Yes, I believe that's true. Producer Lance Barrow, uh, CBS Golf Coordinating Producer. He's, he loves golf. He hates us. <laughs> Only when it's 38 nothing. Here's, here's the catch to McCardell uh, from Fiedler. A gain of 16 yards. Well, li listen to this one, Dan. The total yard is now Jacksonville 271, Miami 3. I mean, every way you try and cut the pie, it comes out. I wish I had something profound to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm praying that you will. First down and 10. Left side, Fred Taylor. And if you direct this lane, Taylor get this thing started with a 90-yard run in the first quarter. 90. Tackle made by Derek Rogers. And, of course, it was, again, I hearken back to last year in, in that Monday night game here where, where Fred Taylor opened it up with a 77-yard run against these Dolphins. And even though they had the short work week, all they talked about was big plays, big plays. We know Jacksonville is a big play team. You can't let it happen, and yet that's all there has been, big plays and shoddy tackling by the Dolphins. McCardell in motion, Fiedler across the middle. Flag is down, McCardell has a first down. If the play stands at the 44-yard line, tackle yeah. made by Sean Wood. Looks like it's coming back. Got to look to the offensive lineman. When none of them make a move downfield, there's no wasted movement by the offensive line. Chad Brown is the uh, umpire today, and here's a pro. Oh, my goodness. Whoa, are they? Well, why not expect something like this? Well, they, they're like cows. They're not moving until they're told to move. <laughs> you, you. Personal foul. Defense, Defense. Number 92. Head slap. 15-yard penalty. First down. That's on Daryl Gardner. Well, we uh, wondered about uh, Dan Marino's state of mind. Jimmy Johnson has just got to be. Daryl Gardner is the raging. defensive tackle right there. He's out of the frame, and he... Must have cranked some. Fred Taylor's down on the ground right there. I wonder if he cranked him. And the ball is uh, marched down inside the 30. Well, like, uh, you know, a personal foul is, is tacked on at the end of the play. Uh, the second personal foul so far on this Miami defense. Obviously, frustration rises to the surface when you're getting it put to you like Miami is right now, but you've got to be a professional. You've got to keep it under wraps. Left side, Taylor in trouble. And Jason Taylor tackles Fred Taylor. Well, let's uh, give you a quick chronology of the, the Jacksonville possessions today and the results of each. They opened with uh, the opening drive of the game. The highlight was a 41-yard catch by Jimmy Smith then an interception led to a field goal now a 90 yard touchdown that makes a quick work of a 91 yard drive but look at these Vern a two yard touchdown drive a four I mean a two play a four play and a three play touchdown drive that, that you know you're supposed to have to work for it a little bit more than that second down and 17 and the carry over the right side by Fred Taylor. CBS Sports Line will deliver the latest sports news and inf information to you via email every morning. We invite you to sign up today at cbs.sportsline.com. Fred Taylor out, James Stewart in. And I think it's really the uh, point where you wonder how much more uh, that Tom Coughlin is going to play Fred Taylor. I think we're going to see a lot of Chris Howard today. Third and 12. That's James Stewart heading to the right side, left side. Fiedler. Tackled at the 22-yard line by Terrell Buckley. Jimmy Smith with the catch. Jimmy Smith went into the last week of the season chasing Marvin Harrison of the Colts for the NFL receptions lead. And Jay Fiedler at quarterback 
<laughs> and look at this as Terrell Buckley carries him all the way back. But Jay Fiedler got Jimmy Smith the ball 14 times as he ends up the season with 116 to Harrison's 115. And so uh, the Fiedler to Smith connection, uh, not an unfamiliar one to people here in Jacksonville. Mike Hollis rides the win from 39 yards out. Missed, missed it. He had a string of 14 consecutive postseason field goals made. It's kind of anticlimactic, isn't it? 5-14 to go, first half. Well, Dan Marino is still at quarterback for the Miami Dolphins, facing, uh, well, what would be an extraordinary accomplishment, it appears, to just move into Jacksonville territory. They have one first down so far in the game. That was by penalty on their last possession. Autry Denson is in at running back now, replacing J.J. Johnson. Had a string of four consecutive carries in the game against Seattle, and he gets the give on this one to the 31-yard line. Coming up on the NASDAQ Halftime Report, Jim, Craig, Randy, and Jerry will have first-half analysis. I'm anxious to hear that. And the latest playoff news, the Rams' Isaac Bruce will be joining the guys as they preview tomorrow's NFC playoff game between Minnesota and St. Louis. That's all coming up on the NASDAQ. Halftime report, second and seven. Of course, tomorrow afternoon, that wonderful matchup between Indianapolis and uh, and Tennessee. The two strong football teams. That one might be a lateral. It is a lateral. It is a lateral that's a free ball, and it is recovered by the Jacksonville Jaguars at the six-yard line. Donovan Darius got to it first. Autry Denson, it went behind him, and the officials immediately signal lateral. Boy, where's Frank Wycheck when you need him? Pass was backwards. It was a backward pass. Recovered by Jacksonville. First down. All right, let's take a look at Dan Marino and concentrate not so much on Marino, but the football. And there he is right at the 25. The ball's right at... You know, just inside, and certainly that ball by a good yard or more is a backward pass. And again, Denson doesn't make much of an effort to get to the football. But right there, he pulls up and, and, and kind of lackadaisical about really, I think maybe it's dawned on him that it's a live football. But Autry Denson, who's a rookie from Notre Dame, just again, another Miami mistake. And in almost all shucks attitude, Jimmy Johnson has thrown the red flag out and challenged the ruling. I don't think he needs the timeout. No, no, no. This won't take as long as it took Phil Luckett last week. Let's look at it from the sideline camera. There's the ball being released just as Dan crosses the 25. And where Denson touches the ball, he's back around the 23. Uh, this is a live football, and again, alertly, Jacksonville realized it. Another look from upstairs. There's the release point right there. Take a look at Dan, release the football. No question that that is a backwards pass. Uh, Ed Hockley will go under the hood. But right there, Denson kind of pulls up. You can't ever assume that it's not a live football as a back. And, as, you know, it all begins with the fact that Denson should have caught it to begin with. But if you don't catch it, at least go get it. Jimmy Johnson has challenged. So Ed Hockley uh, looking at the replay. This might be a mercy challenge by J.J. And if the uh, ruling is upheld, the initial ruling... This will be the fourth Miami turnover. This might be Jimmy saying they can't score as long as the referees over there looking at a monitor. Four twenty-two to go before the break. 
As Jack with all Reeder. replays, we remind you that the call on the field was a backwards pass. Right. So they'd have to see something conclusive to overturn that. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands as called. The pass was backward, determined from the spot that it leaves the passer's hand to the spot that it touches the receiver. Jackson Mills ball, first down. Miami is charged with their first time out. And a nice job by Ed Hockley of using the microphone to explain the ruling. One last look. Dan delivered the ball. He put it right into the hands of Autry Denson and chalk it up to another in a long list of Miami mistakes. Well, we need Herman Melville to write a book long enough to uh, document all of the things that Miami has done wrong in this book. Fred Taylor is back. Goes left. Tackle this time at the seven-yard line. Tackle made by Sam Madison. By Sam Madison. No game, second down. Second and goal. Casey just joined us. That's not really the real score. We're having technical <laughs> problems. It's really 0 0. I have this vision of a guy <laughs> who's just flown into the B concourse in Denver and he's hurrying to catch a connecting flight and he stops and looks up at the screen. Yeah. And he hasn't had any idea what's going yeah, on. We, we can't get that score off the screen. It's really too <laughs> What, what, what do you mean 38 nothing? <laughs> I'll accept the late play, but no. It doesn't look like 38's going to hold for much longer. <laughs> Here's Fiedler back. And that one is uh, in the end zone and intercepted. Went right through the hands of Jimmy Smith. And I think it also hit McCardell. And Calvin Jackson grabbed hold of it. I, did this hit two separate Jacksonville players? Let's watch it. Uh, you're not going to get tipped. Whoa, it tipped originally by Zach Thomas. That's who hit it first. And then it hits McCardell. I, I thought I saw it tipped first. It wasn't Jimmy Smith. It was it was Zach Thomas. Right here, Zach's going to jump up and get his left hand on it. And he knocks it back to the inside where McCardell can only get his left hand on it. And Jackson alertly snaps it out of the air. Well, that's a good effort and a good read by Zach Thomas getting back to the inside. On first down after the interception, Marino drops back. And that one is up for grabs and almost intercepted at the 45. Dan Marino and Tony Martin had different ideas about the route. Dan Marino's pass is headed for Tony Martin. Now this ball nearly intercepted. Dan under duress in the pocket. Let's look at the Jacksonville pressure as it comes right up the middle. Gary Walker, number 96, down around Dan's knees. But Dan had a pretty good look at what was going on. And about five yards beyond Tony Martin. Now, don't automatically assume that that's a horrible throw by Marino. Tony Martin didn't look to me like he was really digging out that pattern. Second down and 10. Play fake. Marino. That's tipped in midair. Oh. Are you kidding me? Carnell Lake just takes it away. Verna. That's going to be a catch, a run, and a fumble. And uh, I, I don't know that you can go to the book and find any more ways that things can look, go around. Look at the look on Jimmy's face. He, he's trying to glance up at the video board. I know Jimmy's been down the block and been to a few rodeos himself. Puts the balls right, puts the ball right onto the hands of J.J. Johnson. <laughs> right to Carnell Lake. Five Miami turnovers. Five. Cinco. If you tried to practice that, you couldn't do it. Fumph. This has been a collection of both the bizarre and offensively terrifying plays by, by Miami. So on the fifth turnover, first down attempt from the 30, Fiedler will try and conduct another score. Puts it out there, caught by Damon Shelton at the 18-yard line. The fullback, Jay Fiedler, who uh, 
got to play in relief four different times this year. Live above Altel Stadium today is the Bud One Airship, providing beautiful aerial shots of Jacksonville and of today's game. That was a nice soft touch by Jay Fiedler running to his left for a right-handed quarterback and able to feather it back downfield with accuracy. Jay uh, plays with a lot of confidence. And off Fred Taylor for the 15-yard line. Well, the name is familiar to everyone who loves music, of course, to Arthur Fiedler, longtime conductor of the Boston Pops. And uh, Jay Fiedler's grandfather was a second cousin to Arthur Fiedler. And uh, that's as close as they could, could get. Of course, the crowd now singing Deo, which was, of course, it's one of Arthur Fiedler's <laughs> biggest hits. <laughs> <laughs> when he got tired of playing Sousa marches. <laughs> Before this is over, here's the handoff down to the 10. We'll find a connection between Harry Belafonte and Arthur <laughs> Fiedler. I guarantee we have reached the two-minute warning. 38 to nothing. Being solid, upstanding citizens, we wouldn't lie to you. It's uh, it's 38 to nothing. I don't know whether to say, whoa, Nelly, or oh, my. <laughs> 38 zip. Bad boy, Vern. Bad boy. <laughs> it is a... Uh, a, a I think like everyone, I'm in shock. I, I just can't comprehend how anything else can go wrong for Miami. They have made mistakes in almost every conceivable fashion. And now down 38 to nothing, they're on the verge of even going farther into the hole. And, I, I you know, from a perspective of what Jimmy says to this team at halftime, I, all he can say is, men, you're professionals. You're getting paid to play. Now go out and represent yourself and your city and your franchise with some semblance of pride in the second half. We shall see. Third and two. Fiedler. In the end zone. Receiver fell down. And it'll be fourth down. Jimmy Smith. Patrick's retained on the coverage. It looks like Mike Hollis will get another opportunity to put 41 on the board. I have played this game before, and as has anyone who's really competed, where things just mushroomed and got out of control and went bad. When it happens in this type of a situation, though, in a playoff environment, it's it's just compounded that much more. The anguish and the pain. Hollis increases the lead. He's two of three for the day. 1.47 to go before halftime. Let's reprise the TDs. I want to see if you can remember them all. Jimmy Smith, this one is easy, 90 yards. Yeah, this will take Red a while. Taylor. This will take a while. Uh, the Jacksonville mantra, many people missing. This is Tony Brackens with the sack, the recovery, and pushed into the end zone by his own guys. Come on, Tony, keep going. You're not there yet. You can do it. You can do it. Fred Taylor once again on the short reception and again just look at the missed tackles by the Dolphins. And that's James is Stewart. James Stewart around the left side where there's just nobody there. And at the conclusion of that, Jerry Wilson with a 15-yard personal foul. So we've had interceptions, blocked punts, fumbles. Miami has self-destructed in just about every conceivable fashion. Lindsay with the kickoff, and this will be a second touchback for Steve Lindsay. Steve Lindsay's kickoff into the end zone, number one touchback. First down, Miami, the point on the ball. The biggest halftime deficit ever in 1990 in the AFC Championship, the Bills leading the Raiders 41 to 3. We're at 41 nothing. Let's put it this way, Vern. If this was a high school basketball game, they'd go to a running clock. If this was a high school baseball game, the 10 run rule would be in effect. <laughs> That's right. We could come up with a lot of different analogies. And we'll need to. 
Left side, flag down. Aaron Beasley is uh, raising his hands in mock protest to the officials. And it will be against Jacksonville. Illegal contact, defense number 21. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. That's the second Miami first down by penalty, which I believe is their total for the game. Right. The only, just think about this, the only two first downs the Dolphins have in this football game are on a penalty against Brant Boyer and a penalty against Aaron Beasley. Blitz coming, Marino, a slam pattern to the 33-yard line. And Rhonda Gadsden makes the catch. Coming up in the NASDAQ Halftime Report, Jim Craig, Randy, and Jerry will have first-half analysis, the latest playoff news. And Isaac Bruce of the Rams will be joining the guys as they preview tomorrow's NFC playoff game between Minnesota and St. Louis. This one to Rob Conrad out of the backfield, and there is an earned first down. I'm glad the guys are going to get a chance to talk to Isaac Bruce because he has been a wide receiver that has really... I think not received the kind of, kind of national exposure uh, that he deserves. The Rams had no national television to speak of this year. The country really hasn't had a chance to see how explosive they are. And folks, let me tell you something. Isaac Bruce leads the football team there with Kurt Warner and Marshall Falk. That is the most explosive team in football, and they are not a fluke. Brackens from the outside. Marino finds Conrad. He slips out of the tackle and has a second consecutive Miami first down at the 44-yard line. Renee Stewart and Aaron Beasley with the stop. Game of 13. Dolphins with two timeouts left. Marino right side. O.J. McDuffie makes the stop. Now let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Vern, it looks like Freddie Tyler might be uh, a little bit winded from all the work he's gotten today. Word from the Jaguar sideline is that Taylor's been brought into the locker room to get an IV. He should be back. We'll check up on that status and be back with you, Vern. Okay, thanks, Bonnie. Second and four. From the 38. If you weren't with us at the very beginning, it's really a cool day here in Jacksonville. The temperature's in the low 60s. As it, it's where it's supposed to be by the end of the day. A kickoff, we're still in the 50s. It looked like a false start on the right side of Miami's offensive line. It's not, you know, it's not the type of weather conditions you'd Before expect snap, dehydration. False start. Offense, number six, 76. Five-yard penalty. It's still second down. That's James Brown, the right tackle. And that will cost the Dolphins five. James Brown right here on the right side. Well ahead of the snap. In terms of Miami's mistakes, one of the smaller ones, but added to the list. Marino kicked from behind Carnell Lake. There was contact with O.J. McDuffie. And Ronaldo Wynn was at the feet of uh, Dan Marino. This is downfield. Yep. The third time that we've had either a holding or an interference call against Pass Jacksonville. Interference. Defense, number 37. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. Well, one of the reasons... None of the Miami receivers are getting any separation from Jacksonville's defensive backs at all. Dom Capers' scheme here has just smothered everybody. And that's really a good throw by Dan Marino, considering the amount of pressure that he was under. On first down, Marino a little over the head of O.J. McDuffie. He was covered by Donovan Darius on that play, number 20. But your call was right, Vern, covered by Darius. Dan's not getting a lot of help uh, as far as having guys open and obviously open in the secondary. Uh, you know, a lot written and said about Dom Capers and, you know, the former NFC coach of the year and, and the job he has done here in Jacksonville. And there is Dom, who has to be on 
most everybody's short list to get back and be a head coach in this league once again. Second down, Marino puts it on a line and finds a receiver at the 21-yard line, Ronde Gadsden with the grab. And that's a pickup of 12 and another first down. 30 seconds to go and the clock running. And I believe the Dolphins have used uh, the second of their three timeouts. They have indeed. They lost their first timeout when they had that unsuccessful challenge on the backwards pass. Monday on CBS, any lawyer can take a case to court. These lawyers take it to the heart. See why millions of viewers have made family law Monday's number one drama. Don't miss an all-new episode Monday on CBS. Alltel Stadium, Jacksonville, Florida. Playoff game between these two teams who've met only uh, once prior to today. That was a memorable Monday night game. Last year, 28-21, Jacksonville won that one. And, uh, you know, you think back to, to our conversation at dinner last night, I, I, we had a sense that Miami was going to play very well in this and might just win this. I thought this was going to be a very close football game. Given the way Miami played last week against Seattle, I thought their defense was strong enough to keep this close. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> First down. <laughs> And that one sails 15 feet over the head of Aronde Gatson. There's a flag, or, or rather, O.J. McDuffie. There's a flag at the 29. Brackens might. Yes, he did. He delivered the late hit to Dan Marino. Holding offense, number 61, 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. No, oh, this is a holding call against Miami. Tim Ruddy, the center, flag for the holding. There's the hit that Vern was talking about at the end of that play as Tony Brackens really drives Dan into the ground. That's, makes a threatening gesture and then immediately helps him up and gives him a pat. So instead of uh, unnecessary roughness, we've got first and 20. Marino, Carnell Lake had it slip right through his hand. Intended for McDuffie, but Lake was close. It is. There are times it looks like the Miami uh, offense is, is just telling Jacksonville before the play what they're running. Look at Carnell Lake. It looks like he's the one running the pattern, not O.J. McDuffie. Uh, I'd be checking the radio frequencies on these calls here. This is <laughs> some job being done by the secondary, the Jaguars. It's hard to tell the receivers from the defensive backs by the way they're running pattern. Second and 20. Here comes the blitz again. Marino, safety valve left side. Stanley Pritchett. And he's dragged down at the 20-yard line by Aaron Beasley. Dan Marino's pass complete to Stanley Pritchett. And uh, the Dolphins use their final timeout to try and get on the board before the break. We begin our NFL coverage for the weekend today, and it will continue tomorrow. Eddie George and the Titans, who defeated this same Jacksonville team twice this year, go into Indianapolis to take on Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, Edger and James, Chad Bratsky deserves a mention for the kind of season he's had okay. for the Colts. That one's tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern time. Well, with nine seconds left, the Dolphins are probably going to try a quick shot into the end zone something with a, a, a fast release I would think so that in case it's incomplete that there might be enough time to get Mari out here on the field for a field goal blitz again right corner double coverage and this one is caught touchdown a run day against and goes up and makes the grab 20 yards Fernando Bryant defending well double coverage and Dan took a chance and jammed it in there. That's another pass that, you know, could have been intercepted given the coverage and given the fact it was hardly a surprise that they were going for the end zone. Number 29, of uh, 25 rather, Fernando Bryant. He's just a little unaware of where he was. 
and then the safety help Donovan Darius just a little bit late getting there. Olindo Mare for the extra point. And the kick is up and good. And the record, that 41 to 3 record, stands. <laughs> Play comes on third and ten, and it cuts the margin to 41 to seven. And they did it in only six seconds. Remember, there were just nine seconds left. Let's take a look at this. And I take it back, that's not Donovan Darius. That's Renee Stewart, number 26, the safety that was coming over to help out Fernando Bryant. Stewart, 26, Bryant, 25. And, you know, that's a, uh, I'm sure Tom Coughlin and Dom Capers even though they've got the lead, can't be happy with that because that's a pattern that there aren't many people that didn't think that's what was going to be run. Well, 41-7 now with three seconds to go before the break. Took 80 yards, nine plays, and uh, Rob Conrad cut a couple over the middle to help set up the touchdown grab by Oronde Gadsden. Dolphins have gone for two. <laughs> oh, you are, you are getting frisky now. <laughs> the ball at the 31-yard line. I wonder what the chart says. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we have reached the end of the first half. 41-7. Oh, And let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein, who's with Jimmy Johnson. All right, Jimmy, certainly the score on the last drive is a positive, but for all the motivational speeches you've given in your career, what's going to be in this one? Well, I've never seen anything like this. Turn, turn the ball over, and you can't tackle. Uh, and uh, crazy me, I actually thought we were ready to play because we had a decent week of practice. But um, obviously Jacksonville's got a great team, and they're playing great. What's the chances we're going to see Damon Hewitt in the second half? Well, we're going to talk about that now. All right, Jimmy, thanks. All right, Bonnie. Jimmy Johnson, John, Johnson could use uh, a blues song from his old high school teammate Janice Joplin right now. That's the end of the half, 41 to 7. NASDAQ halftime report is next. Jim, Craig, Randy, and Jerry. First half analysis, and that is all coming up on the NASDAQ halftime report. Speed. Once Zach Thomas gets by the lead block of Damon Shelton. He just can't quite cover the distance enough to catch up to James Stewart. And Vern mentioned in the first half and, and what Stewart has done for this football team since being their first round draft choice back in 95. And when a guy like Mark Grinnell says, you know what, he really over the last couple of years has been our MVP. Lofty praise. On third and two, deep left side, man open. There he goes, Jimmy Smith. No flags. Touchdown, my Jacksonville. Fiedler to Smith. The route continues. Sam Madison going to the Pro Bowl, whiffs at the line of scrimmage and trying to get a hit on Jimmy Smith. And Brock Marion, playing hurt, has no chance to come over and close the gap. If you're going to take a shot, at a receiver like that at corner, you better get him. Because then all you are is in a catch-up position. And I don't mean catch-up, I mean catch-up. <laughs> 70 yards, Fiedler to Smith. 48 to seven. Another quick strike by Jacksonville, 78 yards in three plays. And they have increased the lead as Jay Fiedler finds Jimmy Smith for a 70-yard touchdown pass and catch. This is Jaquette at the goal line. And Jaquette is popped as he gets to the 17. Corey Terry makes the tackle on this one. 78 yards and culminated in a 70-yard toss. Fiedler to a flying Jimmy Smith. 
Not bad by Jay Fiedler. And I think Jacksonville, do they have four touchdowns on drives of four plays or less? You're absolutely right. I, I yes. think, don't they have three yes. threes and a four? Uh, two fours and a two threes. Is it two fours and two threes? It's a royal flush, whatever four. it is. Oh. Damon Hewitt is on to replace Dan Marino. It's a whole lot of touchdowns without a whole lot of plays is what it is. Hewitt extensive action this summer. And here is Hewitt. Gets rid of it out of the backfield. There's a flag back to the 17. The tackle made up at the 23-yard line as Gadsden makes the catch. There was no foul on the play. It was not holding. Second down. Well. Okay. <laughs> now the big difference between Damon Heward and Dan Marino is that Damon does not identify his targets as quickly as Dan. The Dolphins gave up 37 sacks during the regular season, and even though Dan threw the ball 150 times more than Damon Heward, Marino took nine of those sacks, and Damon Heward took 28. So Damon uh, will hold the ball and stay in the pocket a lot longer and get sacked a lot more. Jaguars are blitzing on the run, and uh, they get J.J. Johnson, Kevin Hardy, and Gary Walker with the tackle. Forty-eight to seven, and more than seventy-five thousand have filled all till. As the Jaguars set a new attendance record on this uh, really terrific day for a football game, especially if you are from this part of the country. And you are a fan of the Jag Wires. Third down. Bracken's coming. Hewer gets rid of it, and it's dropped. Flag is down as well. Well, somebody from Jacksonville had to be in the neutral zone at the snap of that ball. There are just too many people in teal jerseys moving around. Offside, defensive nose tackle, five-yard penalty. It results in an automatic first down. Ed with a missed point there. <laughs> Just assuming that something went wrong for Miami. So first down for the Dolphins. First and 10 at the 10:41 mark, third quarter. Dan Marino, three and out in the third quarter. And David Heward on in relief. Let's look again. Here come the Jaguars. Deep right side. He's got a man open and throws it over the outside shoulder. And Tony Martin and David Heward misconnect. He was there by two or three yards. I believe he threw it over the outside shoulder of the equipment manager. <laughs> I was just trying to be kind. <laughs> this ball ends up. Well into the Miami bench. <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry Izzo was uh, in, the, in the area. Second and ten. <laughs> Draw play, J.J. Johnson. Dragged down by Gary Walker, number 96, in the third down. And given the state of this game, you can't pass the ball every down. Uh, Miami is going to have to run the football. They're going to have to play a little fantasy football here that the score is closer than it is. I, I think it's safe to say that it's an insurmountable lead. If you feel that way, go ahead and run the football some. And quite frankly, mercifully, try to run some time off the clock. Shotgun formation for Miami on third and 12. Tony Brackens uh, appeared to have jumped, but there is no flag down, and the pass is complete up the 38-yard line. O.J. McDuffie makes the grab, and that might be enough to move the chain. Kevin Hardy. Well, Hardy moves, but was far enough back off the football that his forward movement didn't put him into the neutral zone. Kevin Hardy just about a half step behind O.J. McDuffie, asking an awful lot of a... 6'4", 252-pound linebacker to have man coverage 
on a wide receiver who's running away from him. That's not easy to do. Blitz again. Hewitt touched, throws it deep, and overthrows O.J. McDuffie. And off balance, Damon Hewer trying to guide the ball to McDuffie, who was open. Damon Hewer, who played his collegiate football at the uh, University of Washington. Teammate of Mark Brunel for one yeah. year, as a matter yeah. of fact. Actually took over when Mark Brunel uh, left the Husky program. Right idea, just a little too much air under the football. Now Hewitt on second down. Didn't get it off. Didn't get it off. No play. Play clock winds down. This will cost Miami five. Delay of the game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. It's still second down. Fred Taylor, highlight of his day, a 90-yard touchdown jaunt. Mid-first quarter. Longest playoff run in NFL history. 18 for 135 is totals for the day. Yeah, and how about that seven-and-a-half-yard per carry average? And he made the most of his one catch. That was a 39-yard touchdown. Fred Taylor is a, is a playmaker. A lot of teams in this league don't have one. The Jacksonville Jaguars have several. Heward with a play fake comes to his left, and it is caught by the tight end, Hunter Goodwin. Nope, they're saying now the catch was made out of bounds. OOB. And it'll be third and 15. Big target here in Hunter Goodwin, 6'5", 270. Yeah, you saw he, he got both feet down, but that was before he actually caught the football, and then he kind of skipped back up into the air when he actually caught it. That put him out of bounds. Third and 15. Under nine to go third quarter. Blitz again. You were down again at the 30-yard line. This time it was Gary Walker again. Well, right now... The Titans and the Colts are watching this game, and both of their respective... We, we hope they're watching. Well, they have an interest in watching. I'll guarantee you they're watching because they're, both of their offensive lines are figuring out how they're going to handle Gary Walker. Gary Walker has talked about making a difference. What he has done for the defensive line of Jacksonville is immeasurable. Well, Tom Coughlin talking yesterday about... There's the punt taken by Barlow. Having seen Walker in a division opponent's uniform, yeah. he knew him well. And he said, I just wanted a guy that wasn't going to get knocked back off of the ball. The sacks and the pass rushing, a real bonus. Eight thirty to go, third quarter, 48 to 7 Jaguars. They jumped up by 24 in the first quarter, and it has been no low contendere since then. And uh, Jay Fiedler replaced Mark Brunel midway through the first half and has played quite well. Draw play. James Stewart breaks another tackle. Stewart rips his way out to the 47-yard line. 16-yard gain. Another missed tackle. And look, it, it's getting great. Downfield blocking. Keenan McCardell out in front. He's fighting away with... I believe Sam Madison to that side. Look at right there on the left side of your screen. Keenan McCardell took Sam Madison five, six yards down the field. Now this is a guy that this is a star football player in a in a runaway game, still fighting, trying to help his teammate. That's a good work there by McCardell. And he is in motion now. Gain of 16, last play. Here's Fiedler. Make the running back and the catch made by McCardell, the hard worker who has got a first down at the 43-yard line in front of Patrick Sertain. McCardell is the thunder and the thunder and lightning combination along with Jimmy Smith. Quite a duo. 78 on the year for Keenan. 116 for Jimmy Smith. And what a pleasure it must be to play quarterback for the Jaguars to have this kind of talent on both sides of the ball. 
uh, give it to Stewart. Damon Shelton leads the way. Well, he tried to lead the way. Pretty good defensive job by Sean Wooden, who fought off the block of Damon Shelton. And Stewart knocked out of bounds by Derek Rogers at the 41-yard line. 48-7. A reminder, the Jacksonville playing today and for the balance of the playoffs without Tony Baselli, their great left tackle who had surgery on Thursday for a torn ACL. And I'm assuming that every one of these guys, if they had a chance, would say, Tony, this one's for you. Here's Stewart, left guard this time, inside the 40. Well, that uh, Baselli injury, really unusual, Dan, and I know you... Uh, Kind of wince when you watch this. Well, he, he, because he's not hit by anybody. Look at him there. He's just going downfield to cut off the linebacker, and right there he planted his right foot. The ACL popped, and he waves in the training staff. Went to Birmingham, Alabama to have surgery. It was done on Thursday. Ben Coleman, the converted guard, is taking his place at left tackle. And Baselli remains in Alabama watching the game today, and he's supposed to re return back to Jacksonville tomorrow. Third and five. Fiedler deep left side again. There's a collision. That's a and touchdown. a catch. Alvis Wooded. First of the year for number 86. That's that's pretty good coverage. <laughs> that's what an effort by Alvis Wooded to go up and get the ball. Again, Sam Madison lets Witted get out in front of him, but Madison timed his leap perfectly. It just goes right through his hands. Watch Madison go up. It actually touches Madison's hands. Talk about going through his hands. It touches both, and it doesn't ruin the concentration of Alvis Witted. He brings it down, and Jimmy Johnson, he has to just be wondering, I mean, is this some sign from above? At the very least, oh. it, uh, the lyrics of a country western song. First catch of the year for Alvis Whitehead. It goes for a touchdown. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Jordan and by Staples, the official office supply provider of the NFL. After Alvis Whitehead's 38-yard catch, 55-7 Jacksonville. And among the 75,000 plus who are at hand today, the commissioner of the National Football League, Paul Tagliabu, here's Steve Lindsay. Sounds like anti-aircraft fire <laughs> as he kicks it off. It's taken by <laughs> Nate Jacquet. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> <laughs> I, I looked around. Yeah, no kidding. There's Paul Tagliabu on the left and Gene Washington uh, on the right. Don Weiss of the NFL back uh, in the background. And, of course, Paul Tagliabu, a very popular man here in Jacksonville. Nobody here will ever remember the day when he announced that Wayne Weaver had won the expansion franchise. Gene Washington, the director of football development for the league, and, of course, the man who's responsible for it. Passing along fines to the players, and there's the owner of the Jacksonville franchise, Wayne Weaver. I think it's kind of unfair to be shooting off aerial bombs while the other team has the ball. Here's David Heward in trouble and throws it away. One of the largest, my goodness, they could be found guilty of premature speculation. Easy for you to say. <laughs> no. Take a look at the large margins. Chicago, Washington back in 1940 still stands out. 73 to scratch. The sprinklers have come on the football field. <laughs> Perfect. This is unbelievable. The automatic sprinkler system has come on the goal line. Absolutely perfect. Somehow. The smoke started it. I don't know if the concussion from the aerial bombs is there they got him turned off <laughs> uh, well Jimmy you have seen it all now there, one of the maintenance guys ran out look at the low, right corner of the end zone he put a trash can 
on top where the pylon he is. He put a trash can right there on top of one of the sprinklers. Somebody call Jerry Seaman and let's find out if uh, if you touch the pylon or the trash can, is it a touchdown? I think they might want to remove that can here. I'm not sure. Yeah, but they got to do it carefully. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, uh, Vern, yes. You know, this, this game has gone from bizarre to surreal to... I've seen it all, but I, I guess I haven't. There's still 21 minutes of football. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and 10. First standing O for sprinkler system in the history of the franchise. Albeit a young history. Here comes the blitz again. Stanley Pritchett comes left and moves it out to the 35-yard line. The Bud One Airship is proud to provide you with these live shots 1,000 feet above Alltel Stadium. Did that really happen? I couldn't believe it. <laughs> well, it is, I guess, anybody's guess. Concussion or smoke, one or the other, set them off. Third and three. Out of the backfield. Catch is made by Troy Drake, who is normally the uh, starting tight end, but has been hampered with an injury. We did not expect to see him, and I certainly didn't expect to see him at 55 to 7. Well, and you get a completion, and it's uh, well short of the first down. Miami will go ahead and punt the ball away as Tommy Hutton comes out. And as you would expect, he's had one block today. Miami running out of things that they could do wrong. Reggie Barlow is back. Into the wind, Barlow moves up, grabs it at the 30, and nice downfield contact from Larry Izzo, who leads the team in the special teams category. Mark Brunel getting much more of a rest than he anticipated. Sunday on CBS, don't miss the special premiere of an extraordinary new drama about the power of courage and the rewards of sacrifice. Blair Underwood and Vivica Fox star in a City of Angels special premiere Sunday at 8 o'clock, 7 central on CBS. Now Dan Marino gave it a go the first three plays of this half. Bonnie Bernstein telling you at the break that uh, Jimmy Johnson left the decision as to whether to leave the game up to him. And, of course, now the inevitable speculation about will he or won't he be back with the Dolphins or might he be back with some other team. First down and 10. Hand off to James Stewart. Gets out of the tackle and is caught for a loss. Patrick Sertain, number 23. Well, 7-1 record for the Jaguars at home this year. Dan and I were here for that one loss in a rainstorm to Tennessee. The last... Uh, Second interception, Brunel threw in the end zone. But look at the enviable home record they've posted in the last four years. Keep in mind that 96 record was their second year in the National Football League. Of course, Carolina and Jacksonville came into the NFL under a set of rules that we'll never see again. <laughs> the owners will never allow <laughs> franchises to enter with the kind of advantages that Jacksonville and Carolina were allowed to have when they came into the league in 95. James Stewart runs into Zach Thomas after a gain out to the 35-yard line. Suffice to say, to say Bern, yes. that the Brownies did not enjoy the same type of uh, launching out of the gate that the, uh, that the Jags and the uh, Panthers did. Third and five. And they will host the AFC Championship game here next Sunday against either Indianapolis or Tennessee. She's right here on CBS. Yes, it will be. <laughs> Jerry Wilson makes the tackle. Well, it started badly for Dan Marino. He threw his first pass into the hands of Aaron Beasley. Shortly after that, Tony Brackens came around cause the fumble. There's Beasley's second interception. And finally the touchdown, but that uh, didn't mean much. Dan finishes 11 for 25 for 95 yards. Two interceptions, two fumbles. Here's the punt taken by O.J. McDuffie. And he moves 
takes it out to the 44-yard line. You know that one play by Tony Brackensburg. That is, that is a spectacular play. Stop and think about that. You're, you're talking about a guy, A, gets a sack, B, gets a forced fumble, mm -hmm. C, gets a fumble recovery, and D, gets a return for a touchdown. All in one play. It's a Fairfield fantasy. <laughs> it's a Fairfield, Texas. It's, uh, it's about the ultimate for a defensive lineman. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Personal foul. Illegal blocking below the waist. Receiving team, number 88. It's a 15 yard penalty. Miami keeps the ball. First down. Now, I do think I agree with you that it's, uh, you know, it's a lineman's fantasy fulfilled, but he's going to take a certain razzing from his teammates for having to be encouraged into the end zone. Encouraged, cajoled, pushed, carried, <laughs> shoved. You this, a long time ago Here this play is. happened. Look at this. If someone from Miami just touches Tony Brackens while he's on the ground, it, the play is over. You see a touch right there. This, Tony, <laughs> go, my man, go. And it was Bryce Bopp who said, come on, we got to go this way. Number 95. Here's the handoff after the 30-yard line. J.J. Johnson. JJ, Jones the ball JJ with that uh, big game in Seattle last week seems that distant memory right now I'm sure for JJ Johnson and the rest of this team coming next two traditional rich powers collide when the UCLA Bruins take on Ed Cota and the North Carolina Tar Heels that's down at the Dean Dome and it's next here on CBS we near the 205 mark at the third quarter Hewitt, wide open receiver. It's Martin out to the 45 yard line. Uh, Gadsden, rather, 86 instead of 80. And a gain of 15 and a first down. And there is speculation, Dan, not only obviously about, well, let's take a look at this. Yeah, we'll go back and uh, again, Damon Hewitt, he's afforded good pass protection. Look at that good throwing lane that he's got from a vision standpoint. And Ronde Gadsden, a, a big receiver. And a guy that's really become an important part of of Miami's offense. And believe me, this game notwithstanding, they, they do have some offense. Lonnie Martz on a blitz. Untouched. Absolutely untouched. Fourth sack of a Miami quarterback today. And we talked about the sack difference between Dan Marino and Damon Heward. The difference there, Dan probably would have just launched that football towards somebody. Uh, Dan Marino uh, just never shy about throwing away the football, although uh, Dan very well might have been sacked there as well, too. That, that was just uh, an unaccounted for linebacker right up the gut. Second down and 19. Add that one to the chronology of things that have gone wrong or that have been forced to go wrong by the Jacksonville Jaguars today. Well, it's been a combination of both. Jacksonville, first of all, their defensive line has just been stellar today. And that's, you know, that's just effort. That's just making a decision that you can't get to the quarterback, so get up in the air. And Amarlis Leroy, the defensive tackle, he got up, he got it. I guess actually it's Leroy, isn't it? Yes. I knew I'd say it wrong. It is. That's Glad okay. Nope. Marlos Leroy. Rush from the outside. Hewitt on third and 19. Fires 10. Oh, oh boy. Oh, wow. That's and this is going to be a blow to the head. Absolutely. Well, uh, you are not allowed to take that shot against a receiver who's in a defenseless position. Renee Stewart, number 26. Now, will they pick it up? and say the ball was tipped. Pass interference, offense, number 86. The penalty is declined. Whoa. Brings up fourth down. No flag at all on the hit. And this is a big, well, that's one way to try to get off the ball. Gadsden using his size. What a shot. Whoa. That'll, uh, that's an attention grabber, isn't it? And you know what? It may have been shoulder high. It was it, shoulder. It, it, initially, I think we both thought helmet high. Here's the punt. And Barlow. 
Nifty return out to the 45-yard line. That's a 43-yard punt and a 25-yard return. Greg Jeffries with the tackle. That's James Stewart, the running back. Uh, he's having his ankle rewrapped over on the Jacksonville sideline, and he's getting most of the work since Fred Taylor came out of the ballgame after his spectacular effort. Uh, let's get a report from Bonnie Bernstein. Yeah, Vern, it does look like a little bit of an ankle strain. They haven't given me official word. He walked around on it grimace, but he just said to the trainer, tape it up and let me go back in. 55 to 7, he wants to get back out there. Surprise, Fred Taylor is in the rapids. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris Howard is in the backfield now. On first down, Fiedler to Chris Howard. Two yards. And we near the end of the uh, third quarter of play. Robert Jones, number 52. Damon Heward getting some medical attention on the Miami bench. This is Larry Smith, who is uh, on the cart and is uh, in the process of being taken to the locker room. We've reached the end of three. Jaguars lead it 55 to 7. We'll return to Alltel Stadium right after this word from your local station. Well, welcome back to Alltel Stadium. Jacksonville leads it 55 to 7. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we direct your attention to the north end zone, where we would like to announce the 8 1999 NFL Gatorade Punt, Pass, and Kick National Champions. Gatorade's Greg Bradshaw and Gene Washington of the National Football League will congratulate today's winners. The eight and nine-year-old champions, Amanda Massey from Wichita, Kansas, and Robert Harrigan from Milford, Connecticut. In the 10 and 11 age group, Lauren Kazmarek from Western Springs, Illinois, and Tommy Foster from Natchez, Mississippi. The 12 and 13-year-old champions, Amanda Davis from Dos Palos, California, and Joseph Penna from Houston, Texas. And finally, the 14 and 15 year old champions, Hannah Warfield from Sydney, Montana, and Ryan Madrid from Chaparral, New Mexico. The National Football League and Gatorade would like to thank all of the contestants and volunteers who made the punt, pass, and kick a successful program in 1999. To find out where to play or coach NFL youth programs, go online at www.playfootball.com or call 1-800-NFL-SNAP. We begin the fourth. Dan Deerdorf, Bonnie Bernstein, Vern Lundquist, Tom Coughlin, and Jimmy Johnson, and assorted others, 55 to 7. And I'm sure... Neither Tom Coughlin nor Jimmy Johnson can really believe what's happened. Of course, it's good fortune and good play for Tom Coughlin, and it has been the exact opposite for Jimmy Johnson and the Dolphins. They've had their, a few unfortunate things happen to them, but they have played really poorly as a team. Jay Fiedler continues at quarterback, and Chris Howard is the running back, the second down play. The word from the bench is that James Stewart with that bad ankle is questionable to return in this ball game I want to get him ready for next week's AFC title game which will be held here and Jimmy Smith probably done for the day too what a remarkable story of resilience this young man is 1992 second round draft pick of Dallas broke his leg played only seven games 1993 emergency appendectomy out for the year filed a grievance against Jerry Jones which he won 94 released cut by the Philadelphia Eagles out of football for a season to be continued. Here's Fielder and the handoff to Chris Howard spins and works his way for a first down at the 44 yard line. And then Jimmy Smith was given a chance with an expansion team. All he wanted was an opportunity to play special teams. And once he got on the field here, uh, not only resilience, but really a redemptive uh, career that he's had. And what a quality person as well, a leader of this football team. And it, again, to everybody out there, when you think that you've hit a dead end, when you think that I'm really, I, I'm doing the wrong thing or I can't persevere, 
a guy like Jimmy Smith is exactly the reason why you ought to keep pressing. And we got a false start here. there. Yep. But it, it's it's really a case of, uh, think about it, a guy out of the game for an entire Full year, offense. and Number he ends up leading the league in reception. It's still first down. And let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. Had a little bit to the uh, Jimmy Smith saga. He caught 116 balls in the regular season in NFL high, but this guy is incredible. He said, I could have broken Herman Moore's record of 23 in 1995. He said, I dropped 10 passes, and he was able to ramble off every single one of them. He said, six and two games against Cleveland, two against Cincinnati, one against Carolina, one against the 49ers. But uh, you guys have told his whole NFL story. He's just, he really counts his blessings every day he's out on the field. And he hasn't dropped one today, that's for sure. Here's Chris Howard for the right side. The great ones always look to their mistakes as an opportunity to learn. And that's exactly what Jimmy Smith is doing when he when he can recall every one of those drops. Of course, catching 14, the final <laughs> the final game of the season from the team's backup quarterback. Yeah, now that's, Jay, and Jay Fiedler threw him 19. Right? I hope Jimmy took Jay to dinner or <laughs> bought him something. That's that is an unexpected treat when a guy like Jay Fiedler delivers the NFL passing title to you. Second down and 11. Chris Howard, number 24, goes right. Bang down by Zach Thomas, number 54, and Sean Wooden, number 22. Well, the coverage of the NFL continues on CBS tomorrow afternoon. Eddie George and the Titans against Peyton Manning and the Colts in Indianapolis. The winner of that game comes here a week from Sunday. But the Titans and the Colts have at each other tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock, and it begins with the NFL today at 3.30. And something tells me that Jacksonville is rooting for Indianapolis because I don't think they want to see the Titans again. That 14-2 record. The two belong to Tennessee. Yeah. One here, 20 to 19, and a rainstorm back in uh, late September. And then the next to the last week of the regular season, as they would say down Texas way, the Titans laid a whooping on them. Uh, 41 to 14. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It'll be fourth down. Jay Fiedler gives way to uh, the punter, Brian Barker, and Nate Jaquette back to return it. We get signs of some folks who's got other things to do. They're starting to stream out of here now. Brian Barker, by the way, the oldest player on Jacksonville's team. The oldest. At 35. Can you imagine that? I can't imagine being 35. Why? <laughs> Neutral zone infraction. Remember, the defense came into the neutral zone, causing the false start. Five-yard penalty. It's still fourth down. I would think that uh, if anybody would live to be a ripe old age, it'd be a punter. Not exactly the most stressful position in the National Football. No, you you uh, you would you might have aspired to that. Had things gone differently. No, I wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. It's hardly a, a, a position where there's a lot of physical wear and tear. No, but a lot of those guys are pretty good athletes. And you don't right? have to walk right. out there, you know, with one second right. left on the clock the way the field goal kicker does. I'm going to show my age here, uh, and which which I feel comfortable doing in your company. <laughs> Here's the punt. Call the game. <laughs> Down at the two. <laughs> well, why not? I suppose you're not going to tell me tell Ron Woodby stories. Oh, let's hear it. Will it after the commercial? How's that? <laughs> That's a deal. We need some stuff. Ten fifty to go in this one. Jacksonville up fifty-five to seven. Damon Heward on in relief of Dan Marino, and the Dolphins huddled in their own end zone. First down at the two-yard line. Audrey Denson is the running back. Deep man in the eye. Shifting defense. Hardy comes on the near side. And they hand it to Denson. Who's fumble, got some. fumble. Loose ball. And 
Jacksonville has it. I think if Jimmy had a white flag, he'd be waving it. Donovan Darius, number 20. Six Miami turnovers. Thinking to myself before the snap, we haven't seen a safety yet. This is worse. Never got the football. It was his own knee that kicked it out, but you could see that Denson never cleanly got the handoff from Damon Heward. Never got it put away, never secured. Look at that one more time. Take a look at the handoff. Hewitt puts it right there, but Denson doesn't have his hands in a position, in the proper position, to take the handoff. He loses it. He's already never, never had it. And it's first down and goal, Jacksonville. Chris Howard is the deep back. Are they really going for a score in the sixth? This is, I can't comprehend this. Left side, oh, touchdown Jacksonville. Touchdown Jacksonville. I swear we saw the film of the Chicago Washington game, 73 0 run at halftime. I never figured we'd make reference back to it again. Power football right off the left side, whether Tony Baselli is there or not. Tom Coughlin calls the same play, and that's just great power. That is just wonderful power by Chris Howard as he drags Zach Thomas right into the end zone. Mike Hollis with the extra point. I have, I've been working the NFL, Vern, and played. I, I've never seen a game this out of control. I, I, I can't recall. It, it, it is 62 to 7. I first uh, broadcast in this league in 1967, and I concur with your thoughts. <laughs> the NFL on CBS is sponsored by Honda, a winning lineup of cars, sport utility vehicles, and minivans. Blue from American Express, and by United Airlines, now offering more legroom with our new Economy Plus section. We still have 10.37 to go in this ballgame. And it is 62 to 7. There's the spot where about a half an hour ago the sprinklers came on. We might uh, wish for that to happen again. I don't think I've ever done a game where, where you needed eight touchdowns to tie. Short kickoff. And it's Nate Jacket up to the 50 yard line, across midfield, and down at the 47. Damon Shelton with the tackle. 62 points. That is the most in AFC playoff history. Most ever scored in a single game. We refer back to that 73-0 uh, debacle generations ago. 1940? Yep. That game, uh, that game happened. Well, a, a real laugher for the, uh, for the Jags. And anything but for Miami. 46-yard line. Here's Denson gets the handoff. Down as he gets to the 45. Lonnie Martz, number 56. Audrey Denson, the ball carrier, tackled by Mark Finley Wall. Gain of one. Mark Brunel watched him practice on Thursday, and he, he said he felt very comfortable, but he's still dealing with a grade two sprain of the medial collateral ligament, and this just could not have been better for him. No, now he gets an entire week. Uh, actually, a, a week and a day to get ready because they won't play until next Sunday. So, it, you're right, Vern. It's the absolute best scenario. Play fake, second down and nine. And the pass is incomplete at the 33-yard line. The coverage from Jason Kraft, number 29. For number 80, Tony Martin, incomplete. Jason Kraft on the coverage. Third down, Dolphin. Coming tonight on... Well, coming a little later on CBS. We'll talk about it in just a bit. Is it there a new game show? Yeah, I think so. It's called Winning Lines. You want to hear some more about it? After this play -out. I bet you will. Third and nine. From 
around the corner, Smingy Heward incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Now then, as promised, do it, big guy. It's Winning Lines, the exciting new game show from the creators of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Last week, a soccer mom won half a million in three minutes. See what happens tonight. Winning Lines tonight on CBS. This game has gone on so long, Dick Clark is starting to show his age. Well, one thing that will start after this game. So, oh, oh. oh, there you go. Perfect. Unbelievable. Perfect. Tom Hutton drops the ball. That's a live ball. No, I think oh, they're... now they're going to say down by contact. Yeah. It looked like a... Yeah, I caught it out of the corner of my eye. It looked like a good snap, didn't it? Looked like Ed Perry delivered a, a good snap, but Hutton just dropped it. Three to go in the game. 62 to 7, Jacksonville. Most points ever scored in AFC playoff history. And uh, quite uh, obviously, you would assume most points ever scored by the Miami against the Miami Dolphins. And uh, Jacksonville's history only goes back five years, but they're rolling in this one. They defeated San Francisco. That was the 41 to 3 game. And here is Mark Brunel looking on. Chris Howard. Jay Fiedler in the backfield, and Chris Howard just keeps adding to the stats. Vern, I, I am standing here just going through the mental checklist of the mistakes made by the Miami Dolphins today, and seriously now, I, I can't recall ever seeing a team make so many mistakes across the board. You know, there have been mistakes where one quarterback has thrown seven interceptions or something like that. But this this has been a litany of errors all across the Dolphins roster by virtually everybody. I, I, it's an extraordinary day for Miami in, in the negative sense. Second down and one. And I, I would suppose if I'm a Jacksonville fan sitting at home watching this game now, I think, well, wait a minute. You know, the Jaguars have scored 62. So, you know... But it really has been Miami's self-destruct button, don't you feel? That? Uh, Jacksonville has physically beaten Miami today. I, I, I think both of their lines have dominated the line of scrimmage. Uh, certainly Jacksonville has won this game outright. So let's, let's get that out on the table. But still, Miami has aided them along the way with one disastrous error after another. It is, it, it's stunning. I, I'm, I'm struggling to describe it. Jacksonville in excess of 500 yards of offense today. Damon Shelton gets the handoff here. Damon Shelton, the ball carrier, tackled by Tim Bowers. You see that uh, Miami is saying that Jacksonville fumbled the ball. Well, they're uh, unstacking bodies. What the heck? All of a sudden, one of the Dolphins gets floored. No, we don't need a fracas now. No. That's not. Most of the officiating crew, including Ed, including Ed Hockey, at least, was still over trying to ascertain who had possession of the football. Looks like Kyle Brady might have been involved. And Sam Madison might have been involved. And in the meantime, they're apparently. Now, now, this was a dead ball foul. This came way after whatever happened before. So if Miami recovered the football, it'll be theirs. And then they'll march it off after that. The ball was fumbled and recovered by Miami. After the play, it was a personal foul. Unnecessary roughness by Jacksonville, number 80. It's a 15-yard penalty. First down. Uh, let's uh, first look at the fumble. Just a simple handoff to fullback Damon Shelton, and the ball is out before he hits the ground. So Miami got the ball, and at the end of it, way afterwards, Kyle Brady gets the 15-yarder. Uh, the
Audrey Denson comes left and uh, is tackled at the 48 yard line. Let's go back and see the end of that play. Mike Arnold, our director, Lance Barrow, our producer. Uh, there's at the top, you see right there, number 80. He's kind of pushing and shoving with Sam Madison. And Madison ended up flat on his back. Of course, Brady, 6'6", 275, a formidable foe for little Sam. <laughs> 503 total yards. Eight touchdowns. Second down and nine. Hewitt back. Here comes the rush. And Marlis Leroy got there first. There's another fumble by Miami. They recovered it. And they did recover it. Yeah. And one of the offensive linemen covered it up. Is that James Brown or Richmond Webb comes up with it. Richmond Webb comes up with it, I think. Leroy in there again. Marlos Leroy, the rookie from Georgia. He's he's been a beneficiary of his team having such a big lead. He's a guy that doesn't get to play a whole lot. And he's getting a lot of playing time here with Jacksonville resting a lot of their starters, all the starters that came. Third and 13, 62 7. Four man rush. Heward finds Conrad, but that is short of the first down. So the Dolphins will go for it on fourth down from the uh, 43 yard line. Dave Thomas, number 41. Lonnie Martz, 56. Well, Vern, the, no, they're not going to go for it. No, they're going to punt. And now, when this game ends, Jimmy and the team get on the plane. They have the short flight back to Miami, and then. The future of Jimmy Johnson and the future of Dan Marino and the future of the Miami Dolphins becomes front and center to the point where they're not even I'm not sure they'll spend a whole lot of time talking about this game. The future of those two and whether or not they their futures are intertwined from here on a big topic of the day. Here's Hutton's punt bounces at the five and will be down at the one yard line. Ray Hill down to uh, put his hands on the ball. 62-7. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Acura. Cars are our passion, engineering is our art. And by the United States Marine Corps, the change is forever. 547 to go in uh, regulation play. 62-7 and a third quarterback on now for the Jaguars, Jonathan Quinn, in his third year from Middle Tennessee State, actually started two games last year and played in four. And the handoff goes to Chris Howard, who is out across the uh, five to the six. It's been a nice opportunity for Chris Howard to shine here, Vern. He's run hard. Take a look at the size of Jonathan Quinn at 6'6", 238. Hasn't uh, completed or attempted a pass uh, in 1999. Got some playing time last year. That's where those numbers come from. Well, if he attempts or completes a pass now, we got a story. Yeah, I'm sure he said thanks a lot, Tom. He gets <laughs> sent out there on the one, one yard line. 5.05 to go. So uh, Mark Brunel played uh, a little more than the first quarter. Jay Fiedler came on in his place. And now uh, Jonathan Quinn is uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars work on the clock with a 62-7 lead. And uh, over on the far side, it's just it's so difficult to imagine what must be running through the minds of uh, the coach and the quarterback. And the entire team, they have to just be numb and in shock. Who, who would ever imagine that this could happen to anybody in the playoffs? It's inconceivable to think that you could walk out, be a playoff caliber team. I don't care if they're the sixth seed or not, to walk out on the field and just be devastated. That is the handoff on third down. Rushing yardage prior to that play, respectively. For Jacksonville, 246 yards. For Miami, 16. And Troy Drayton right there saying, I don't even want to see it. And so the punting unit comes on, Brian Barker. Ron Whitby. Ron Whitby was the punter for the Cowboys. You were talking, you were disparaging the athletic 
talented putters? I was not. Well, I was you, saying you, what a great. I was saying what a great job. Lack of contact and a lack of pressure. Job. Yeah, I think. Okay. It's All right. I, 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 I didn't I, say they weren't good at. I misspoke. Whitby was a professional basketball player, a professional golfer, and a punter. I never dreamed I'd get that into this broadcast. There's the return to the 28-yard line. No, nor did I. <laughs> nor did Ron. Thank you, Proud. Yes, sir. Tonight on CBS, the start with winning lines, the exciting new game show hosted by the ageless Dick Clark. Don't miss the action and learn how you can play at home. And it's an all-new candid camera, followed by Sam O'Hung and Arsenio Hall and Marshall Law. And finally, Chuck Norris stars Walker, Texas Ranger, an all-new lineup tonight on CBS. There's Rich Tilski, the left guard, and been a really a good outing for the offensive line today of Jacksonville. Damon Heward will put it deep left side. Good man coverage from Dave Thomas, the pass intended for O.J. McDuffie. Well, the place emptying out now as the Jaguars uh, will uh, go to work on either Tennessee or Indianapolis and the live aerial views of Old Tell Stadium provided by the Bud One Airship. Second down and 10. Blitz, pass left side incomplete at the 15-yard line. Jason Kraft defending. Burn, you and I were speculating about the futures of Jimmy Johnson and Dan Marino. The first choice, the first option is going to belong to Jimmy Johnson. His decision has to come first. Dan Marino has a $7.5 million cap figure against the 2,000 roster of the, of the Miami Dolphins. And uh, Dan's either going to have to renegotiate if it gets down to the fact that uh, Miami maybe chooses to release him, that can't happen until after June 1st uh, or else they take a huge salary hit. Jimmy's first in line, though. Jimmy's got to make a decision as to whether or not he wants to come back next year. Here's Heward rolling right. Escapes a tackle, fires it deep in the end zone, is tipped, and then dropped Jason Kraft on the deflection as McElmurray hit it first and uh, Renee Stewart, rather. Number 26 was back there. Heward, Heward wasn't across the line of scrimmage? Yes, he was. <laughs> yep. There is a flag. He looked like he was way oh, did hockey league. But uh, Jimmy has to make the decision. Does Jimmy, is his heart in staying with the Miami Dolphins? Does he retire and go to his house down in the Keys? Does he go back into the broadcasting business where he was a success before with Fox and with HBO? Uh, I think everyone knows that... Uh, that ABC has uh, been interested in talking to Jimmy about possibly doing Monday night football. Illegal forward pass. Offense number 11 threw the ball from beyond the line. Five yard penalty from the spot of the pass and a loss of down. Brings up fourth down. Take a look right here. The line of scrimmage, the 27 yard line. And let's, uh, the 28 we'll call it. And let's go ahead and see Damon Heward and where he ends up releasing this football. Remember, it's where the ball is, not his body. Say Damon's down closer to the 25 by the time he actually ejects the ball. But, you know, Jimmy said to us yesterday, he said, don't. You know, I think a lot of people are jumping to conclusions that uh, if I retire from football, that I'm going to do anything. Right. Jimmy is uh, financially independent, and if he chooses to go sit and fish in the Keys, he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to work to put any bread on the table. On fourth down, here's Heward. And it's knocked down by Blaine McElmurray, number 38. So the ball goes over on downs at the three-minute mark. Yeah, he thought about uh, your question last night about his future for, for quite some time and then said, just be aware that if I choose not to come back and coach, I might not do anything. Yeah, don't assume that I'm going to go into broadcast. Right. Coming up on the American General Post Game Show, Jim, Craig, Randy, and Jerry will get you caught up on all the playoff news. Plus, we'll hear from the winners of today's Miami-Jacksonville game. And Marcus Allen reports from Tampa, where the Redskins are getting set to take on the Buccaneers. All coming up on the American General Post Game Show. Jonathan Quinn hands it off to Chris Howard, number 24. 
And uh, the clock goes under the 250 mark. And we'll be followed by NCAA basketball on CBS. That follows the American General Post Game Show. It'll be UCLA and North Carolina from Chapel Hill next on CBS. I think about the Dolphins. I think about Jimmy Johnson and that decision he has to make, Vern. If he chooses to retire, what a way to leave the game. Your last coaching job uh, is a team that, that gets beat 62 to 7, if that ends up being the final score. Chris Howard coming left. Chris yeah. Howard from the University of Michigan. I don't have my Tom Jackson impersonation down quite as well as I should. <laughs> but I appreciated the effort. Two minute warning. Texas Lutheran. Two minutes remaining in regulation, 62 7. Jacksonville leading Miami. This one has been a route from uh, almost the opening drive. Uh, look ahead now at, at, at uh, what Jacksonville will await uh, come next week, Indianapolis or Tennessee. Well, I'd say Jacksonville has a confidence level at a pretty high level, wouldn't you, Vern? Uh, this is a football team, obviously, that, that knows they deserve that 14 and 2 record. Uh, they took heat all year about not beating a winning team all season. Well, now they have, and I'd say they've beaten a team with a winning record pretty convincingly. So from a confidence standpoint, I, I don't think Tom Coughlin's team could be in much better position. Third down, and Chris Howard short of the first down at the 40-yard line. And, Vern, as we come to the end of this game, I just want to tell you something. I, my first year back here at CBS, I want to thank you and, and everybody uh, in our production team. This has been a really fun year for me, and I just want to thank everybody who's traveled with us on a weekly basis for making my life enjoyable. And it's been fun working with you, Vern. Thank you, 72. Thanks for a great year. Hall of Famer Dan Deardorff, uh, I, I can only echo your, uh, your sentiments. It's been uh, one of the most enjoyable years that I have had. Wasn't there have the, been a few of them. Was it the most enjoyable? Oh, <laughs> yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> Fourth down. And Barker's on to punt. This one will be returned. Nate Jack Cat has it. Across the 50 and down at the 49 yard line with 105 to go. 29 yard return. The executive producers of the NFL on CBS are Sean McManus and Terry Ewert, the coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS, Larry Cavalina. Today's game produced by Lance Barrow, directed by Mike Arnold. The senior producer of the NFL Today is Eric Mann. The NFL Today, directed by Bob Matina. The associate directors of today's game, Andy Goldberg and Sean Robbins. The associate producer, Carl Schlicksbeer. The broadcast associates, Fred Johnson and Mark Burghardt. The field technical manager, Steve McEwen. And the technical director of today's game, Mitch Geller. And thanks to the guys in the booth as well. Chuck Gardner, Chris Hellum, Nancy Lundquist helping with the spotting. And the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to win this one 62 to 7. And I would think have silenced the critics about a soft schedule. Hey, they didn't make it up. They took it. They won 14 games with it. And now they have opened the playoffs the way anybody could only dream about starting the playoffs. And the home field advantage in this crowd will be back here eight days from today. Well, no questions for Jacks Jacksonville. Enormous questions surrounding Jimmy Johnson and Dan Marino. And I don't think those will be uh, questions answered immediately. Well, it's up to Jimmy. Jimmy's uh, got a little soul searching to do. I, I, I hope whatever decision he does make, that he does make relatively soon so that... If he's coming back, that he can get on with the business of getting this team ready for next year. 62-7 is the final. In excess of 500 yards of offense for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Seven turnovers for the Miami Dolphins. The American General Post Game Show with Jim Craig, Randy, and Jerry coming up next. The final, 62-7. Bonnie Burt's
Bernstein and Dan Deardorff. I'm Vern Lundquist saying goodbye from Jacksonville, Florida.